Welcome back aliens, my name is Davin Reddy and in this video we are going to talk about what is JUnit and why do we need Mockito. In fact, if you have been in Java world from a long time, you might have heard about JUnit, right? Or maybe you have worked on JUnit and you might have heard about uh, Mockito. So what exactly Mockito is and why do we need it? So we'll start the example with JUnit and let's move towards why do we need Mockito. Again, in this video we are going to not, not talk about how to use Mockito but then why to use Mockito. In the next video we are going to talk about how to use Mockito. So what we will do is let's get a sample project and while doing that let me just create a Maven project. Of course Maven is Maven project because I need those two dependencies which is JUnit and uh, Mockito. So let's go for Maven project. I will say I will need a simple quick start project. I don't need any web application and we'll give an artifact ID as a project name. We'll say this is demo uh, JUnit again with Mockito of course but then let's not have a big big name here and let's click on finish. Now once we got our project in this area, you can see we have other projects as well. Let's ignore that. Let's focus only on our project which is demo JUnit. Now what we will do is first like, let's try to understand why do we need a testing or JUnit framework. If you know that's great. If you don't know, what happens is whenever you make a project, in your project there will be lots of classes, right? Especially if you're, if you're working in Java. So you'll be having lots of classes and in each class you'll be having some methods, right? Now what happens is when you build an application you have to make sure that you have you, you also test an application. Now, how do you test it? So the one way is you can build the complete application and you can test it. But you know it is not that flexible to test the entire application. If something goes wrong how would you know what went wrong? So what we do is we test the individual units. What is unit? A smallest part of your application. Now in, in terms of Java classes and methods, they are what you say, the smallest part, right? So methods has a behavior, right? So you're testing that behavior. So what we will do is we will test the classes and the methods that is called as unit. Using JUnit, you can do that. So you, you can achieve unit testing in Java using JUnit. Again, there are, there are lots of other uh, testing framework available, but then we will be using JUnit here. Luckily, if you talk about Maven project, if you, if you expand your Maven dependency, you can see we by default we have JUnit, so we don't have to worry about that. So what we will do, uh, now how do we actually implement that? So let's say if you have, okay there is one more concept which you should know is TDD which is test driven development. Normally what happens is when we make a project and we test it, right? Uh, the another approach is before baking a module, create a test case. It's, it's something like you have not built a thing, but then before building that stuff, you have to test it, okay? You have to get a test case. Of course, your test case will fail, right? Because if you are testing something which is not there, of course, it will fail. Then you have to create a module which should work, right? That, then it will be passed. So first, your test case will fail and later it will pass. But again, let's not get into that way because again, this video will be very lengthy if I, if I go in that way. So let's create a simple, a very simple class here to test. Again, I will not be using any complicated stuff here. Let's say I'm using a calculator. I don't know, I love this example of calculator for every example because I believe, you know, let's make it as simple as possible, right? So let's use calculator. And of course, when I say calculator, you'll be having some basic uh, keywords, there, uh, some basic features, right? So every calculator will have a method which is addition. So what we'll do is we'll say public int add and we'll say this is int i comma int j and this is your add method which returns i plus j. Now, how do you test it? How do you test this feature? Uh, of course, you can call this, right? So in your, from your main method, so in your app, you have your main method. So what you can do is get an object of calculator and call add method, your job is done, right? But then that is not how you actually test because that is manual testing because if you are checking by yourself, that is manual. Let's automate it because you might have thousands of classes in your application, right? And if you change one class, it may affect other classes as well. Can you test all the thousand classes manually? That's not possible, right? Even if it is possible, it is not flexible. So let's automate this stuff. What happens is even if you change one class, it should test all the classes. And for that, we need automation. And of course, for that, we can use JUnit. So how do you test this calculator? So what we can do is we can, in your test package, if you can see, we have a main folder here and we have a test folder. In this, let me create a test case. So I will say, you can see that when you right click and say JUnit test case, it is there. In case it is not available, you can go to others and you can search for JUnit test case. So it is available, let's click on this. And I will name this test case by naming convention, we should have test calculator because you are testing this calculator, right? So we'll say test calculator. I will click on finish. 
and yeah, okay so we got this test case but normally okay let's not use this extend way this there, there are multiple ways of doing this we can use annotation way right so let's use annotations here just to make our work simple what i will do here is i want to test the addition method right so we, we should get a test case i will say pub, um, public void we are testing the add method so i will say test add now how do you test it uh, okay, so what we need is to test the calculator object. First, we need object of calculator. That's how we test it, right? So we'll say calculator C equal to new calculator. But normally what we do is, okay, let's just have this calculator there. And here, what we will do is we'll say, okay, how do you test it? Now, to test a calculator, we need to say at the rate test because we're testing a method, right? So this is your first test case. But as, as you can see, we are getting some issue. I guess the problem is with, is with the version of JUnit. So let's use a latest JUnit. But how do I get a latest uh, JUnit here? So I will say, I will go to Maven repository and I will search for JUnit because we want, we want latest one. Okay, let's search for JUnit and let's pick up this 4.11. And let's go back to our palm file because this is where you will change the version right so i will just go to palm xml file and let's use the latest one so let's re remove the dependency and let's put new one okay and now once we got a new dependency you can see now we got that annotation available so in your maven dependency as well you can see we have J junit now let's say control space and let's import junit and here how do you test it now so in this we have something called as assert equals now assert equals is a static method is, is that assert equals okay it is giving it's not giving you the option let's say assert equals and okay i guess we have to import okay so normally what happens is this assert equals is a method of assert class so let's use a static import because every time you have to say assert dot assert equals that doesn't make sense right so let's use a static import now assert equals will take two parameters the first one is the okay let's say control space the first one is expected the second one is actual so i will go for actual first i will say when i call c dot add by passing two values two and three it should return five so i'm expecting five if your logic is right of course this test will pass right now how do you test it uh, okay so let's run this uh, do we have to run it as normal java application no, because we're testing it, right? So I will right click here. I will say run as. You can see it is giving the option of JUnit test. So I will say click on JUnit test. It should test. Now the, now the amazing part is when you say run, you're running one test only and one test passed. And you can see a green symbol there. So this green line means your test passed. And that's the beauty. Let's say if I make a, if you, if I make a mistake, let's say in calculator, and normally this is not the case, right? We will not make a mistake in calculator, but let's say by mistake, you are saying I plus J plus one. That's a mistake, right? And now if you test it, now if you run this test once again, you can see we got red line, which means your test fails. Your expected value was five. And because of some, uh, prop, because of some, what you say, the coding issue or the logical, the algorithm problem, you have made a mistake here and the test fails now you know okay something went wrong let's again do some modification oh you realize that we should not be having one plus one there so this is the right logic and again you will test and you can see we got green this is junit right again this is the simplest example you can think in fact in junit as well we have uh, we have before we have after now why do we need before let's say uh, the object which i've created here is an open object right let's say if you want to define if you want to create an instance inside a method Normally we create that method something like setup. So we say setup because this is a method where you will create all the objects. Something like initially this will be null and later you can say c equal to new calculator. But then when to call this? So you can say before the testing of the units you can say before. So before is this will be called before test and you can also have after let's say if you want to remove release some resources you can do that. Right this is JUnit. Okay, so this is perfect, right? If you even if you have thousand classes, we can test all the classes using JUnit. Okay, so that makes sense. But why do we need so this is JUnit, right? Simple. Again, this is not the complete system on JUnit. I just wanted to show you why do we need Mockito. Okay, now why do we need a Mockito here? Uh, okay, let's think about it. Let's say we have a calculator, right? And by some means, I don't know why, 
But let's say we have one more class and that class is, let's say I will have uh, a class and I will say this is calculator, uh, okay, calculator service or maybe calculator service here. Yeah. Now it may happen that you, you uh, and this, I don't want to make it class, I want to make it as interface. So let's say we have this interface calculator service and in this interface you actually have a method called as add. So public int add, okay, which takes two parameters, I will say int i comma int j. Now you will think, okay, why do we need this? Just think about it. This is a simple application, right, calculator and that's why you're defining it. But sometimes you might want to process this information using cloud service. Let's say if you have a cloud server and that cloud server says, hey programmer, if you want to add two numbers, you don't have to do that by yourself. You can use our cloud service, right? So every time a user clicks on the uh, calculate button, your application will connect with a server and you will get the response. The second way, second, way, second uh, scenario is, let's say you are fetching this data from database. Maybe uh, in this uh, calculator service, maybe this is not a calculator service, this is something you will connect with database. Now what will happen is every time, okay, so let's, let's write it here so that you will get a good idea about it. So let's say if you have calculator service, let's say this is service. And of course, I want an object of this. So if you want to, if you want to add this, what I will do is I will say service dot add and I'm passing those two values. So of course, a user is expecting that I will add those two numbers. But I'm so lazy that I'm not doing by that my, by myself. I'm asking a cloud service to do it for me. So this is an interface. Maybe you can imagine an API. So this is an interface which is connecting with the cloud service. Okay. Now that means every time I test this calculator, because see, this calculator service is, is well tested. Okay. So whoever has built this application, maybe calculator service, maybe this service is provided by Google. Google have done a proper testing on calculator service. So of course, as a programmer, as a developer of this application, I don't need to test calculator service, right? I need to test only calculator. But the problem is, every time you test calculator, it will be using this calculator service. So just imagine, every time you test it, let's say if you are building an application, in your application you have thousands of classes. If you make one change, since you are using JUnit, it will test all the classes. And even if five classes interact with the cloud service, even if five classes interact with database, five classes interact, interacting with something else. Just imagine if you are if you are testing application, if you are running the application, it will take ten minutes to run the test. Will it make sense? Of course not, right? And why do we need, we need to test the service? Cal uh, I mean, the calculator service. We have to test our application, right? So what normally we do is we create a stub because before without this implementation, we cannot make it work. So sometimes what happens is your application is dependent on some other application or maybe your class is dependent on some other class object. So that's something other, other class object may be working with database. Maybe it is not even built. How can you test it? Right? And that's where we have to mock those services. Now when I say mock, it simply means that we can create a fake service. Right? It is not the actual service. Every time you test this calculator, it will not connect with the server. We will test this calculator with the help of fake service or a mock service. Again, there's a big difference between mock, fake and stub. We'll talk about that in one of the video. But then we create a mock service. What it means? This is not the actual service. This is a duplicate copy of your service. So that you don't have to worry about calculator service. You have to only test about test your calculator. That's where we need, we need mocking frameworks, right? So you can do the mocking with the help of mocking frameworks and there are different mocking frameworks available. We have jmock, uh, we have easymock and we have mockito. And mockito is one of the easiest mocking service available. So in the next video, we're going to talk about how do you use mocking? I mean, how do you do mocking in this application? So yeah, that's it. This is the simplest application where we have talked about JUnit, uh, how to build a JUnit test case and why do we need a mockito. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, do, like, do click on the like button and let me know if you have any questions in the comment section. And if you have some good things, do, 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 do comment that as well. So that's it. Thank you so, so much for watching.